thanks to Ubisoft for sponsoring this video. If you want 10% off the year eight pass, literally click the link in the top of the YouTube description and you will get 10% off of the year eight pass that extends until March 20th. You can get 10% off the year eight pass. Year eight of Siege is here. Operation Commanding Force. We got a new operator as in the name of Brava and this operator right here is absolutely bonkers. She can hack enemy gadgets and make them their own. Like, look at this cap can trap. And boom, there goes cap can's leg. And the anti-cheat with mouse trap is quite literally the biggest news we've heard in a long time. Coming to console in the middle of year eight, season one, is actually mouse trap, which basically means that any and all people who use an MK on console, use any kind of third party device, will literally get input delay. They will literally lag in game, which will literally force them to use a controller. This, this season of Siege Protect is by far one of the best seasons, might be my favorite, just because of the tactical element that Brava brings to the table. And I'll show you guys myself playing Brava in a little bit. But um, yeah, man, I'm super duper excited for this season. And thank you so much to Ubisoft for sponsoring this video. But yeah, let's get into the video. The theme of today's video is inside the mind of an R6 champion. I've never, ever, ever made a single video like this before. And people have requested me to make videos like this for a very long time. Here we are, we're in the map ban phase and I'm thinking, I'm literally just screaming ban consulate. Right here is just some, uh, just some ranked footage of me literally solo queuing, which uh, as my first advice as a champion is if you want to reach champion, don't solo queue. And yeah, we're on consulate. The one map on that board I didn't want to play, they landed me on consulate, but, but it's fine. We're going to persevere here. Um, now, this is where I really got confused because I'm at champion ELO and I banned Jackal and my team banned Fuse. Maybe I'm missing something on Consulate, but I don't remember or recall Fuse being useful on this map ever. It's fine though, the opposing team does actually ban Jackal. And also guys, let me know if you want more videos like this where I literally just give you my exact thought process and everything that goes through my mind in a round of Siege from start to finish. Um, let me know if you guys like like types of videos like this. If you do, drop a like, drop a comment, and make sure you subscribe, bro. We got like, we got like 70, 80 percent of the people who watch the videos aren't subscribed. So like, what are you doing, man? Subscribe. It's literally free, and um, you literally get like daily videos. I post every single day, and um, so I ban Valkyrie. I don't think I I don't really like dealing with Valkyrie on this map. The biggest issue with Valkyrie on Consulate is there's just so many broken camera spots because Valkyrie can just blend in with the lighting and all the windows. So like, I just don't like dealing with Valkyrie on Consulate at all, but I'm gonna vote for Cafeteria and Garage. I do think Cafeteria and Garage is the best site on Consulate. Um, I was initially thinking I'm gonna play Bandit just to like, you know, Bandit trick the wall here. But then I thought again, I'm like, um, yeah, my team is not gonna help me Bandit trick. They're not gonna cover me at all. Then I'm like, all right, I'm gonna play Echo for the plants and all. Then I'm like, nope, let me go Thunderbird, get the heals here. But yeah, dude, I literally got on and solo queued one game and here are my stats this season. So like, like I said, like this video is going to help you, um, like actually literally rank up and it's. You know, I've had a great season so far. I have a 1.6 KD. I'm already champ like three, four days into the season. The bomb. So like, I genuinely think if you follow through in this entire video, like I said, the Brava gameplay will be when I'm on attack. But if you follow through this Eight entire five, video game, and like genuinely, literally, I'm not even like trying to sound cringe, but literally get a notepad out and like actually just jot down the things I'm saying. A little bit of rough aim. But um, that's what happens when you don't tea hunt. There you go. There's tip number one. I did not tea hunt like before this ammo. game. You should always be tea hunting before ranked. And uh, you know that is plasma pink. <laughs> but um, back to the uh, game here. So I'm going to pretty this throw. Um, wow, the aim's looking a little bit shabby. I haven't been a big fan of Thunderbird since they fought her. But um, basically, first big tip here is 
Always put your Thunderbirds at like, the most safe locations of the attack. I see a lot of Thunderbird players putting them in sketchy spots where the attackers can get to them. You're going to want to put them in spots where it's going to be very difficult for the attackers to get to. And this strategy is one I've been doing for three years. I literally put a C4 on the soft wood, and then I literally wait for them to shoot open the door. They drone a little bit. They see that Visa office is clear. Then they take Visa. But there's a problem. I have two teammates roaming in Visa. I literally go to game chat. I'm like, guys, fall back, fall back, fall back. You can literally see me mouthing it out. Then Castle shoots my camera. You can literally rewind that. This is why you don't solo queue, bro. Castle just shot my camera, so now I literally have to blow this C4 up off of sheer sound cues. Literally, I have to literally just guess. Like, I have to just listen to loud footsteps and just try to, like, guess and... I ended up getting a drone, and I thought I may have knocked him because I heard him proning, like, right here. I heard him proning, but apparently he wasn't knocked. So it's like, this is what I mean by not solo queuing, but it's still possible. Like, it is still possible to hit champion solo queuing. Um, and then he's, like, teabagging. So I'm thinking that this guy may have recognized me. That's what I'm deducting here. But then I'm, I, I see him go down, and I, my recoil is just right over his head. And, you know, I get it. I almost smack the camera. Just one round. My teammate was kind of messing with my head a little bit. He was talking in game chat, so I just went to my own party and let it fall out. Uh, but now, like, what a champion does, what I'm doing right now is I get on cameras. Like, uh, when around, if you are dead, bro, you should always be on camera. Now, this is a 4v1 here, but I, like, you know what I mean? There's only so much I can really call it out, but you should always be on camera, bro. That is the biggest thing that a lot of players don't do. They like to spectate their friends. And I get it, it's funny, but dude, you gotta get on camera. It's literally the most important thing you can do. And this guy actually almost clutched it. So then you see me heading into game chat. I'm calling out. I'm calling close left on the floor. I'm calling close left for him. I'm like, close left, close left, close left. Bang! 1v1. Then I'm like, last guy's on the breach. Breach, breach. You gotta go. You gotta go. Then he's like, Jinxie, what should I do? I'm like, bro, stick a, stick a defuse. Stick a defuse. It's your best bet. The only mathematical way you win this is sticking a defuse. Stick a defuse, stick a defuse. And he almost gets it, but we lose round one. It's not It's not a big deal. Losing rounds is part of the game. It's all about just analyzing what he did wrong there. The biggest problem with that round is I probably shouldn't have been roaming. I probably should have just helped my team in sight. But um, next round, I'm going to be showing you guys one of my favorite little spawn peaks that I do on this map. I'm um, basically because like, I, and this is another thing that most R6 champions, if not most, almost all have like little books, like li not, not, not physical, literal books, just strat books, like strategies in their heads that they like using um, on certain maps. So like consulate, the one I'm about to show you is... Um, is like literally my it's like my favorite spawn peak on this map but we're losing 1-0 you know we got to keep our head in the game here it's just one map i'm or one round i'm still not even sure why castle shot my camera but um so basically what i do is um you know obviously another thing that champions do is look at how i set up side okay i make a rotation on one side of the wall head hold on the other side of the wall and reinforce the single point. this is gonna make this objective much 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 more difficult if you are an attacker like if you're an attacker this is gonna make the objective so much more to uh uh um attack if you're literally on those windows guys i'm sorry if i'm like this is the first time i've ever done a video like this where it's just 20 minutes of just straight voices so i'm trying my best here but i always put barbed wire on these stairs i think putting um two sets of barbed wire here is always really good because that staircase is really active here is the spawn peak i love to do on this map. This spawn peak is so good because I'll show you why you get a little slit there. You don't break the glass. That's important. And then I can actually go on the camera outside and, like, utilize this camera. So I'll show you in a moment. When you see me crouch down and get on the camera, you can see that I can actually see almost all of this spawn. Even if somebody hypothetically, and I see Ayana. Look at Ayana. I see I see Ayana repelling up, and I, it's showtime. Right now, it is showtime. I got to just wait, and there it is. Boom. There's the angle, and that's just how you got to play, bro. Got to use camera to use your ability, and it's a 5v4, and there you see me screaming. I'm literally just screaming at my monitor right now. I think I said slammed. Yeah, yeah, I definitely said slammed. So now I'm in a 5v4 scenario, 2 minutes, 18 seconds on the clock. I'm just chilling. Like I said, utilize cameras. R6 champions utilize their cameras, whether they're on attack or defense. Utilizing cameras is the most important thing. Obviously, stop you from Jinxie on Twitch. Get the Jinxie charm. You see it floating beautifully through the air on my gun right now. Sub your boy Jinxie on Twitch. Get the Jinxie charm. 
but I know one of them's on the window. I'm deducting that because they just smoked off the window. So I know for a literal fact that one of them is on the window. Four v four scenario. I see my teammate go down up here. I know they're pushing admin side. So basically, what these guys are trying to do right now, they're trying to just sandwich us in the objective. But I heard somebody rappelling in this bathroom and then. Because I did just hear somebody literally repelled into the bathroom. So this is the part where I'm like, okay, there's definitely somebody in the bathroom. And I'm guessing he's behind this castle because of the way he literally just repelled in. I'm guessing he's got to be behind this castle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the rotate, hold a long angle, and just swing him right now. Bang. But there's a guy on the window. There is a guy on the window and you can see me screaming. That's just really unlucky. I had honestly no way of knowing there was a guy on the window and there was a guy laying down in the bathroom. But again, I get on cameras, I try my best to call out and this is where I'm getting concerned. I started to think to myself, how is this guy in champion? He is literally flanking with Captain Shoddy. And he actually does end up picking up a like frag there, but I don't even know how. And then Rosito thinks he's using a sniper rifle. I don't know what, I don't know how long range he thinks the shotgun is, but this round ended up being really sketchy. Cause now watch this. Okay, bro, you cannot wall bang that dude. Like this guy just tried to wall bang through a concrete ceiling. 20 seconds left on the clock. He's gonna try to rip out this castle barricade. I actually do like ca how Capcan played at the end. Down to 15 um, seconds. He played a lot smarter at the One end of the round. Operator remaining. Like he waited and Ten waited and waited, and now we see the like plant is probably going down right now. So Castle or Capcan, go. you gotta go. You gotta go. The plant is going down right now. Go, 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 go. And here we go. The classic Rainbow Six Siege player Time who is more concerned with their KD than actually winning the round. Zero, why would you not stick the plant, bro? You never know what could happen, bro. He could have potatoed, his controller could have died, his cat could have literally jumped on top of his monitor and started tugging his Johnson. You literally never know what's gonna happen in a round of Siege. Always stick plants, bro. I cannot stand when players are prioritizing their KD over actually winning games. But now this round, I'm gonna hop on Mozzie because Mozzie is without a doubt my favorite operator to use on Cafeteria. I'll show you why. There's three pest spots that I use where I literally end up getting three drones every single time. Like, I'm okay, I don't actually get three hacked drones every time, but it, bro, it's pretty consistent. I'm not gonna lie. Like, it is pretty consistent. Um, here we see me on the Mozzie. It's 1-1 one, one right now. The area. And uh, I'm trying to protected. get us this round so we take the lead. First one you gotta do is right there. Get them on the left side of the door. Second one you gotta do is on the drone hole right there. Somebody always runs a drone uh, hole. Located the third one you do is literally right here on the staircase. You do it on the top of the stairwell. That right there is gonna get you at least one, maybe three drones every time. Boom, there it is. I got a pest right there. And, uh, dude, it's like I said, like, Mozzie is just easy money. So now what I'm thinking is inside my mind right now is I'm trying to prep this drone somewhere to where I can literally, um, get a plant denial drone. And, like, this round right here after playing this game back, Down to five this seconds. round and the last round were my two favorite rounds with how I played. And I'll explain why when it's actually located. But, again, I go for the C4 strategy again because... Last time it kind of got griefed by Castle um, shooting the camera, but this time nobody's griefing. So basically the reason how this strategy works so well is when people shoot up, shoot open uh, Visa door, the last thing they're gonna do is drone below for a C4. They're just gonna drone Visa, right? Like, I, I mean, I know myself personally, I would just drone through Visa. So they literally just drone Visa, they see that it's clear, they shoot open the door and then they walk on top of the C4. It works every time. But um, my, my Mozzie drone ended up getting captured, so that was a little bit frustrating. But um, so you see, I'm just sitting here waiting. And um, like I said, this is my favorite round by far with the decisions I made. So I'm starting to realize that, okay, literally nobody's over here. So I grabbed the C4. I'm like, bro, I'm going to roam above and you'll see what I end up doing. You'll see what I end up doing. This was, I, I mean, I don't want to toot my own horn here, uh, but this was kind of genius. So I'm like, all right, um, I know that my teammate, my teammates aren't the best. Yep, down goes one of them. So I know that they're going to probably struggle on the objective. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, as Obi-Wan said, I have the high ground, Anakin. I'm going to try to get above and play vertical with my C4. 
Now you might be like, Jinxie, how's that even beneficial? And I'll show you right now. This is why I am an R6 champion. So I head down to the stairs. I'm like, oh my God, they have the wall open. Oh my God, they have the wall open. They're gonna try to plant soon. They're gonna try to plant soon. So what I do is I throw a support off the soft wall and look at this. Everybody and their mother likes to plant right next to this van. So literally all I do, sit, wait, stay patient, stay calm, and I will catch a planter every time. Teammates are dropping like flies. 2v3 scenario, I'm literally just playing above on the verticals. I'm licking my lips, I'm excited, I'm like a tiger when he spots a hyena in the wild right now. Minute on the clock now, I know one of them's gonna try to hop in here, and here's where my Johnson turns into an extended barrel. We see him put down the plant, but I know it takes seven seconds to plant, so I wait until the last second, get a one-tap headshot, and he is absolutely lost right now. He's probably like, bro, I don't even know where I just died from. He is absolutely lost. Now, I have the diffuser. I end up pinging this for my teammates. I'm like, bro, we cannot lose this, bro. It is a 2v2 scenario. Literally, all I gotta do is just play above on the diffuser. My Johnson is creaming all over. Wait, what? I'm excited right now. That's all you gotta know. I'm excited. I'm in a great, powerful position here, and I know another guy's gonna be pushing soon, and I hear him getting close and close and close on the breach. Capcan's under fire, but boom, I saved his life. 2v1 scenario, and I Again, I'm in the most powerful position ever. Time expired. 10 seconds 10 on seconds. the clock, and down goes Capcan. And then I actually tag up Ace, but he gets away. And now I know he's planting. I gotta do the dash. 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 I'm dashing. I'm dashing. I'm dashing. And You're out of time. here we go again. Another Siege player who cares more about their kill to death ratio than ranking up. This is what high ranks is like, bro. People literally just think high ranks are like, bro, I'm telling you, if you're watching this video, bro, and you're just following along with what I'm saying, I'm telling you right now, bro, you will 100% rank up. Like just, just follow these tips, follow everything I'm about to do. Um, first tip is make sure you're rocking the Jinxie charm, baby. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll put the link in the description of where to get the Jinxie charm at, but, um, so this is the gameplay you've all been waiting for. Brava, she literally just got released like, I don't even know, three days ago, four days ago at the time of this recording. So like, Brava is like, without a doubt, like my favorite operator on attack, just because of all of the versatility I can actually have with Brava. So like, what I'm gonna show you guys right here, right now, is what exactly I'm doing in my exact thought process with Brava. So basically, um, in the preparation phase, I'm trying my best to prep a camera. On Garage, there's underneath the van, you can get one of the best cameras in the game. It's very difficult to get it there, but once you get it there, you literally can see basically everything happening in the objective. And I'm actually trying. Somebody shoots my, or shoots at my drone. I actually get it under though, and we're safe, we're safe, we're safe. Um, so now I know for a fact exactly the gadgets they're setting Ten up. Seconds to go. I know where the mute jammer is. I know where the bandits are. I know absolutely everything. And Five seconds what I'm about insertion. to do with Brava is absolutely mind boggling. So basically I'm like, oh, location okay. so I know where the mute jammer is. I literally throw an absolute Tom Brady throw, like something out of actual New England Patriots Super Bowl finals. And then I'm like, okay, give me that right now. Give me that new jammer. But I'm not stopping there. I want the camera. If I get this garage camera, it is game, set, and match. And I snipe it, but I didn't know Bravo was that. I didn't know she had to be close range. So I have to get closer. I have to get closer. Now this is where it gets a little risky, but I actually get the job done. And we're actually successful in hacking the camera. Now I want you to look at this. I want you to look at how overpowered this is. I want you to actually genuinely Look at how overpowered, overpowered this operator is. I can see the exact whereabouts of one, two, three enemy combatants. I actually knock Oryx here. I light him up. Um, Jinxie Charm is flying through the wind. So I knock Oryx here. I know he's going to res himself, though. I don't want to get too greedy. Your average player would just get way too greedy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually take some fire and fall back. I know that Oryx is just going to self-res because I know that they have a rope. So... Like, your lower rank player, your gold or plat would get really greedy for that kill and probably just get traded off. You never want to get greedy. So what I'm going to do here is I'm like, I'm going to flank them from the back. I check my camera one last time to see where they are. I now know exactly what I need to do, but there's a problem. I run into an enemy combatant right here. We exchange some shots. 
So now what I'm gonna do, now this is where it gets to high level siege here. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate over here and just shoot my gun. I want him to know to that I rotated. I want the guy that I just fought to know that I am now on yellow stairs. I want his team to be like, yo, 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 drop us on yellow stairs. This way I can double back to the staircase I could just was on. Now I'm doubling back, crouching down, minute on the clock. I'm pretty sure I checked my Brava cam one more time. Let's see if I do. I think I do. Mm. I actually don't remember. No, no, no. Okay, so I walk down. And then I hear him getting on his camera. Yeah, yeah, that's what happened. I heard him getting on his camera. So I know Mozzie's in sight and Mute's in the closet. Watch the decision I make right here. I'm like, all right, I'm going to take on Mozzie, then look for Mute. And boom, it looks to perfection. Where's Mute at, though? I thought he was in the closet and he was on the double door. But my team's got this 2v1 full sight control with an Osa shield down for you to plant. And I noticed that Osa's rocking the Jinxie charm. Uh, there's honestly nothing that brings more joy and like happiness to me. Like, look at the smile on my face right now. There's nothing that brings more joy to me when I see like literally when I'm just solo queuing and my random teammates have the Jinxie charm. Like, dude, big shout out to everybody who has the Jinxie charm. Like, it is truly amazing, bro. Like, um, but 2v1 scenario, pretty easy round. I mean, there's not really um, much you can do in a 2v1 <laughs> scenario post plant with an Osa shield down. Like, it, it's tough. Like, you can't really expect Mute to win that. But we take a three to one lead. Now, this right here, what we do this round is without a doubt by far the most diamond one champion r6 number one whatever you want to call it this is the fate this is by far my favorite round of the game i message my teammate i'm like yo my brother um uh what's it called yo did my gameplay just crash oh no, no i'm tripping i'm tripping i'm tripping i message my i thought my chat i thought my gameplay just crashed i message my teammate i'm like yo my brother we're gonna do a rush plant. I literally said, go Monty and spawn with me. I'm literally like, yo, yo, go Monty and spawn with me. Because this rush strat, I, a lot of strats like you see from champs, you know what I mean? It's stuff that they learn from other champs. This strat right here, I swear on everything I love, I literally bomb. made it up myself. All you need is a gridlock and a Monty. If you don't want to use gridlock, you can. it works with a Nomad and a Monty, but I think it's most optimal with a gridlock and a Monty. So literally all you do, I'll, I'll, I'll show you exactly what we do, but I, you basically, I told him to go Monty. We see he switches here. I love this guy, bro. Not only does he rock the charm, but he listens to the strat. He switches to Monty, and then in a few seconds here, he spawns with me. So I'm like, bro, literally, this is all I'm thinking right now. We are literally just going to go for a rush plant. We're going to shoot open the windows. All you do is quickly gridlock both of the doors, and then you literally just have Monty stick his head in one of the doors. Five seconds to go. I didn't even have to tell him exactly what to do with Monty. This guy just understood the assignment is a great player he knew exactly what to do so you literally just have a monty just shove his head in one of the doors gridlock gridlocks uses all of her gridlocks on every other door if they have a rotation that's fine you use it on one of the rotations you smoke off the doors you plant the diffuser and then you literally just sit and wait now like this strategy i would honestly say has like an 85 percent success rate like a lot could hypothetically go wrong but I noticed that there's a Goyo here, and I'm like, oh my days, he's lost the claw. I'm gonna use this Goyo to my advantage. Once I get these objectives, all I have to do is shoot the Goyo, and that means they cannot walk in the door for about 25 seconds, and I'm taking shots when the grid locks are down. Look at my boy Monty, bro. He completely locks the door. I literally love this guy. Like, he understood the assignment perfectly. We plant the diffuser, no problem, and then I'm gonna shoot this Goyo off of this door in like a few seconds. Now they literally can't even get in through that door for 20 seconds, bro. 4v2 scenario, the enemy team is just gonna And I pick up an easy pick. Monty and me are in a 4v1 scenario. I hear the last guy on the door, I'm just suppressing. And um, yeah, man, it's just easy elo, man. It's easy elo all day long. Guys, if you want an um, episode two of Inside successful. the Mind of a um, Champion, get this video to 10,000 likes, and I promise you, we will bring back episode two of Inside the Mind of a Champion. I think that these videos can be very beneficial, and uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, 
drop a subscription uh, to the channel, comment, and like. I love you guys so much. Thanks to Ubisoft for sponsoring this video. If you want 10% off the year eight pass, literally click the link in the top of the YouTube description and you will get 10% off of the year eight pass that extends until March 20th. You can get 10% off the year eight pass.